start the meeting now that I've got Susan online. Uh, 5.34. Oh, excuse me, 5.34. <laughs> I said, whoop, that was fast. <laughs> <laughs> We're already done. Um, so change to the agenda as we're adding Roger for the sheriff's department because I didn't know he was coming till after I did the agenda. So we're adding him. And Justin, did we have another addition that I'm forgetting about? It was the landslides or right. the FEMA. And we already have it. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for keeping me straight. My pleasure. And Justin, just so you know, Scott Griswold and Sheriff Marcoux are the only ones in here with us right now. Okay. Okay. Well, Scott, come on up. You're just in time. Are you ready or do you want Roger to go first? No, I just want to grab my sheets for everybody. I'm sorry. It's been earlier, but I have to okay. I think I'm going to see you I'm concentrating so much on the dog thing. I know that we're going to want to talk about today. I forgot to ask them to make seats. That's okay. Oh, we'll say, do you want? Yeah, perfect. You can run up and make some. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see how I'm going Thank you, Steve. Go ahead. Let's try this. Definitely. Got some worksheets here for you. Great. Um, do you mind leaving an extra copy for the for the vault? What did you say, Dustin? I'm sorry. Can you leave an extra copy there for the vault? Oh, certainly. Thank you. Right there. Okay, this has been actually our most difficult year that we've had. Um, Recording in progress. Okay, we were we're on a calendar year, whereas you're on a fiscal year, and so in for the month of, for our first half of the year, January through June, we were down 143 calls from the prior year at the same time period. From July through October, in those four months, we were up a total of 18 calls. So we're down 125 calls for the year, which means it's mm -hmm. roughly about $100,000 in income. So it hasn't been easy. Um, so mutual, mutual aid, everybody wants to know how we're doing on mutual aid typically. We received in 2023, 20 mutual aid calls from other entities. So by, as of November 8th this year, we've received 11. We've needed to help on 11 calls. 2023, we received, we supplied 67 mutual aid requests. By November, November 8th, we had um, supplied 50 mutual aid. So we'll be right around the same in that 70 figure. Okay. Um, people seem to be doing a good job last year. Most of our mutual aid is in Cambridge and they've done a great job this year. Um, spent a lot of money to do it, but they've done a great job. So this year, when we first put our budget together, um, it looked like we would not need to ask the five towns for an additional $212,987. So that's not going to fly. Um, so we went through a lot of exercises and we looked at ways of increasing our income. And we got that down to an increase of $35,574 for the five towns. Hyde Park's portion goes up roughly $12,600, roughly. Um, how did we do that? few different ways. We were finally able to negotiate a contract with Copley Hospital. We've always done most of their transfers, but we now have a contract with them. Mm -hmm. Part of that uh, increase, uh, part of that contract, one of the problems we had, we were doing a lot of transports for uninsured people and getting no income. And they weren't necessarily from our five towns, which then we could easily justify that. 
<laughs> so they're going to assist us with that now. Um, okay. Certainly not going to be paying us what we normally would get, right. but it's going to help a lot. We also, right now, I'm doing a cost analysis of, right now we're fully staffed, which means we have somebody 24-7, 365. But if somebody's sick or they go on vacation, we have only way we can fill that position is overtime. As you know, that gets rather expensive. So I'm doing a cost analysis of hiring two additional people and we'll use them to reduce their overtime. But I'm also, we're talking to um, UVM about picking up some transports out of there and their transports are typically long distance and that can be really good income mm -hmm. so i think we're going to do it um we've got some people in our course now that would be interested but we just want to make sure it's not going to be costing the taxpayers anything it's actually going to be saving them money it doesn't make any sense if we just break even we want to make sure we can help you guys out yeah um we also um have we just recently purchased a new billing software system where the only ambulance organization in the state of Vermont using it, one of the few in the Northeast, but everybody we talked to really found an increase in their income because of it. It not only helps us find their primary insurance, but also if they have any secondary insurances so we can bill them as well. Uh, we've already seen an increase in income from that. The other thing, it also will give us information on deductibles. Ah. So if somebody's really close to reaching their deductible, we don't want to bill them because otherwise we got to try to get the money from the patient. So every two days, it will notify us where they are on the deductible. Once they get the deductible, we bill and the insurance company pays 100% and away we go. So it's really helped out in that aspect as well. Just from the billing system. Yeah. Interesting. It's really state of the art. It was quite expensive, but it looks like it's going to pay for itself in four right. to five months. Wow. wow. So, um, and then of course, we have no idea if Medicare or Medicaid will have an increase this year. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they did, but, and that's where the bulk of the business is. So, so what, and the other thing, um, because ambulance services are still trying to find enough help, everybody's offering higher wages. Uh, we've kept everybody, but we're going to have to give everybody a five, roughly a 5% increase. So that's built in the budget as well. So I think we did fairly well. It is it's almost a 9% increase. I'd rather have four or five. But I think we're putting ourselves in a position where we can stop doing that very shortly. I expect some of that call volume will come back. Um, we didn't plan on all of it. We used roughly getting 50% of it back for our budget. If it all comes back, that's good news for next year. And it's like one of those things where you don't really want the business, but. Yeah, we, we can't advertise. That's for sure. <laughs> Um, but they are, the crews are doing great. We've got some great people. We've had um, three crews, got cardiac life-saving awards this year. Three people coded. They brought all three back prior to getting to the hospital, which is very, very rare for that to happen. Um, so we're really proud of our crews. And any of our crews could have done it. Um, it was nice going to the award ceremony. And I actually, I met two of the three victims, and it's pretty amazing to sit there and talk to them, sit there and talk to them afterwards. Yeah. It's pretty neat. Sure. Any questions? Any, has anybody had any feedback about us at all? No news? Good news? You know, Nicole, this is your first budget season, so this is these guys come and present. And then... Oh, one other thing you may have a question on. If you look on the one page sheet, it says our NEMS budget 2025, a grand total of the appropriations is 431,933. That is for your fiscal year, July 1st, okay. January 30th. Okay. If you looked at our budget, our 2025 budget for appropriations is 414,148. 
So that is half of last year's 396, 359, which would be paying us January through June. And then half of this 431, 933, which is July through December. Got it. Jen will want to know that. So yep. good to know. Okay. One thing, if you could ask Jen. Mm -hmm. um, She's joining. Oh, she is on. Hi, Jen. Hi, Jen. Are you, can you hear us? Oh, maybe. What does it say? Oh. It's just me here. Okay. okay. Um, Sorry, I'm here. Okay. He was just asking about you. So he has a question that maybe you can answer. I think you would be the best person to ask this of. Um, we have the most difficult time of year with um, as far as having the appropriate capital that we need um, is the beginning of each month. And right now we bill for the past month. So late June, say we will send out a bill for the month of June, which is typically pay paid right around the 1st of July. We're wondering if it'd be okay if we paid for the month, if we billed for the month of ahead, it would still be for one month, except for we would do it at the change of the fiscal upcoming fiscal year. So in June, you would get a bill for, um, and at the end of June, you get a bill for June, which would finish up this um, fiscal year. But we'd also send out a bill for July for the beginning of the next fiscal year, would be due the first week of July. So in June, you would have two payments. That would be the only month that would happen if we made this change, but we want to make sure it's okay with the towns prior. I think it's doable. Um, would that change happen this coming June for yeah. next year? It would be June of 2025. Right. Is our select board members okay with that change happening? Yes, I sure. Am. For you, for finance reasons. Yeah. yeah. It, we can make it work. Okay. Great. Right. Thank you. So that's, I spoke with three of the towns, you know, third that agreed it would be okay. So Good. we'll get back to you after we talk to the other two. Okay, perfect. Okay. Great. Any questions, ladies? Susan, any questions? No, I'm glad they're there. I, I, I appreciate them being <laughs> there. Yeah. Hey, uh, Scott, this is Ron. When you, when you do make that transition, somebody in your office may be tempted to send one bill. Uh, make sure that they bill twice, not once. I've requested that already, but I will follow it up at the time. Yeah. Thank um, you. Thanks, Earl. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now I go to Eden. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Susan, I emailed you the sheriff's budget. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Yes, yes, come so right please. up, sir. I'm going to find that. Oh. Oh, look at that. Mm. You better know when you're ready. What do you want to talk first, budgets or dogs? Budget. <laughs> <laughs> sounds Please. Like, sounds like rolling a joy in a <laughs> grant on the weekends. That's right. Talking dogs. All right. So the bottom line here with our budget is that we're keeping it, we're holding the line for all three towns at 3%. Okay. So that leaves it. So I'll go down line by line unless you don't want to do that. But the, the, you know, the big line is, is, is always the salaries. And there's a, you know, another jump there because this year we are done with our cops program. So that means that fourth year it's on us to pay. So, and that was part of the pay to play thing. Yeah. It's a four year program. That final year is hundred percent. We have to promise that we will keep that person on 100%. Yeah. 
it's the Fed's way to add cops to the communities. Yeah. Yes. So you guys might not remember that. Or Nicole, you obviously don't. He hired right two cops out of the academy that were paid, their salaries just were paid. One. Oh, just one. Just okay. One. And the salary was paid until the for four years. So the ago. first year is 75. They'll pay 75% yeah. of that base salary. Second year, 50%. Third year, 25%. And the fourth year oh. is all us. Yeah. So, so, um, and you're fully staffed, right? We're good. We, we are not fully staffed, but we have, for some reason, we have more applicants than we've ever had. So, we're going to send to the academy in February. And there's a, um, you know, and then we've been looking for just to see if there's certified. Uh, uh, officers out there that that with canine certification for a dog and sometimes work in a midnight shift we like to not have those people working alone and have some company with them because it's it's getting rougher out there than it's ever been the other thing i'm trying to do before i retire is to put two people on every shift and I understand the tremendous budget pressures that all of the towns have. So I'm trying to be creative about some of the other money that we're we're making mm -hmm. so that we can help contribute to that. Because uh, for me, if we're going to do it, we've got to do it where the, everybody is safe. And there's a problem with how much that costs compared to, you know, the affordability with, with the taxes going up and everything. So, yeah. Yeah. so we created a um uh for those of you does everybody know Kara Gates she's my business person and we created a line for overtime last year so I could kind of monitor that to see uh because that's that's a line that we have control over sometimes we don't depending on what's going on out there but yeah. so we've got an overtime line that we've we've added um and uh so that's you know that's basically uh around you know, it's gone up about four thousand dollars. But the big pressure for us is the definitely the health insurance. And this year, uh, last year, 2024, 2425 is 152,000. We're up to 217,000 dollars. Yeah, and and I'm sure yeah. you're seeing that across the board for highway and everything else that you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and so as you go down those lines, you're going to see that some of the things have gone up a little bit, uh, and, but we tried to hold the line on a lot of them and one glaring omission here that's on me because I didn't see it and I don't know why I didn't, but, uh, I've got to talk to Kara about our auto insurance, oh, right. but it, it will not affect you because no matter what the budget is, we're keeping you at 3%. Well, I think we're it's included, progress. Roger, because if if you look at 23-24, insurance liability was only five grand, and then it was 25 for auto. It looks like it's all combined now. Yeah, I'm going to have to Maybe. talk to her because those pots of money, you know, I, I want to understand it all. So I am going to look into that, okay. but I will tell you it's not going to affect me. <laughs> Okay. So uh, then we we kept if you'll if you'll see below the auto insurance the gas expense patrol equipment everything we leveled okay. we leveled that we level funded that okay. we have um, an addition of a taser agreement so all of our tasers and our cameras were at the end of service so for fourteen of those to run the entire operation doesn't mean that the patrol towns are paying fourteen. It was $180,000. I can't believe that, but it's what it was. So we made a deal where only patrols only responsible for eight of them. So we made a deal with them to pay 19000 a year. Okay. So uh, so that brings our, our total operating costs up about 8.5% at $1.5 million. And then with a capital budget, you add in the cruisers, which now are to equip a cruiser is $70,000. If we can find them. Yeah. Uh, so that brought it up to 9.64%. Now, if you go down to the box below, we have the revenues. We do not have revenue coming in from the COPS grant. That was always the first line. Uh, Laraway School was always very generous and sent us, uh, 
you know, has, have been sending us money. We didn't, we never know exactly how much it is. So we take a guess. The special investigations unit, that's a unit that we, every police department is required to investigate okay. sexual assaults. So there's a unit um, out of the state's attorneys and sheriffs that have a, um, a grants person. Um, and uh, and so they divvy up to $60,000 for the county of Lamoille between Stowe, Morristown, and Lamoille. So we each get 20 grand a piece on that. Okay. And it's really, we're going to be pushing to do better than that because we do a lot of those, sometimes up to 50 a year. And when you're paying for a car, gas, wow. in person, it's not, it's not cutting it, but that's what we get from the legislature. So, um, so we'll be looking at that. Um, and then Elmore this year is bringing in 18, uh, 524. So that brings the, the assessment from Hyde Park went from 482 last year to, uh, 497. So, and, um, and Johnson went from 552 to 569 and we'll cut 266 to 274. And that, that's 3%. So that left us with a $180,000 hole that we're, that the, um, that we've always contributed because as the sheriff, that's what I want to do to, to the community or for the community. I, I, you know, all of these extra things that we do that bring in revenue to the department. Well, when I retire, I can't take that with me. So I, I, I like to, to put that forward and, and help out our patrol. Okay. And in a way it's good for the towns. It's, it's good for the towns, but it's also good for the, for the patrol people because I'm not, it's too dangerous to have single patrol people anymore, you know? And, uh, and I'm very, very proud of our workers comp that, you know, we've had a couple people hurt this year, but they, other than making that report of first injury, they didn't, you know, I kept them busy doing things so that we didn't get that uh, yeah. experience level raised on us. Yeah. So that's basically, you know, where we're at this year. The overall kind of went up from 1.436 to 1.574. But I think in this day and age, you know, keeping it at 3% is pretty reasonable. I think if you look at other towns, police departments and everything, you're going to see a, a bigger increase in that just based on the health insurance. So. And you have a lot of young, young officers too. Young families. Yeah, family, too. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I don't skimp when it comes to benefits and everything because you shouldn't. Yeah. We, we've already lost one person this year. We, we're holding steady, but we lost a really good, good deputy to Stowe. And I think the reason we lost them is because they're out handing fifteen thousand dollars signing bonuses now. Um, yeah. And that's yeah. and, and Milton and that area, some parts of Chinon County are up as high as twenty five thousand. Yeah. Where's that gonna where's that gonna stop? Yeah. Huh. You know? Yeah. So um so that's kind of um, yeah. Any questions on the budget? I'm sorry, I got my, uh, I don't know where the camera is. No, no, that's okay. I know you, Roger. No. <laughs> You're one of the few people I trust behind me, Sue. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions, feedback, ladies? Jen, any questions, comments for him? Uh, I guess I'd just like a copy of it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> When, when we can. Yeah, I apologize. About that. I don't have. I don't have any pressing questions. Okay. Not seeing it. I have one. Are you all talking to Johnson and Hyde Park? Because this this a long time ago was a partnership between the three towns. Johnson and Wilkins. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Sorry, Johnson and Wilkins. Okay. Is is that still? Hopefully, it's still viable because this this uh, formula is based on that, but. Would maybe next summer, if I arranged a couple of meetings just to to get together to talk about gripes that you may have, issues or or things you know uh, that you want to discuss, is that something that somebody might attend from the board? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Good. I think it's good. We're getting together on the communications budget. Mm -hmm. We're getting together on that on um, in early December here. Okay, it's next week. 
So, and I don't know who's going from the board. I, I, think, hope. I, I think I am. Okay. <laughs> so what we're looking for the initial draft on that was like 7% mm -hmm. for the overall. And, uh, and, and I know that we're going to chop that down around three, three and a half percent. Okay. All right. Uh, so there was an issue with the dog that I just found out about this afternoon. So the, it was, I asked for a timeline. If it's okay, I'll just read that. Is that all right? Yeah. Are you aware of this? Yes, you are a little bit. He's it's just crying out about the dog. So it can, the, What's the matter? What's that one? No, I'm just trying to remember which one this is. Yeah, oh, hold <laughs> on, I'll listen. Well, Allie's on too. So a, a complainant contacted Animal Control to report an abused dog. This was in Johnson. Yes. She tried calling the Johnson ACO, but did not make contact with anybody. And she was told to reach out the ACO Judkins here in Hyde Park. I don't know what that arrangement is, why that was. So I, I, we're, we're conducting our own investigation sure. on okay. this. So okay. the complainant contacted ACO Judkins and Judkins fielded a call for ACO Locke. ACO Locke could not fill the call due to a family event. ACO Locke suggested assistance from LCSD. Uh, Deputy Delva with the LCSD responded and found the dog to be in pretty bad shape. Please mange general poor health. Cool. Deputy Delva reached out for the state's attorney, Gerhardt, and she authorized the dog to be seized and brought to the pound. The whole while, this is a Johnson dog. Deputy Delva also worked with animal control uh, uh, officer Judkins and received an opinion from her that the dog needed to go to, to the uh, vet immediately. So uh, Staff Sergeant Watson later spoke with Johnson, uh, ACO Locke, and he advised that the dog was too aggressive and had an unknown health condition, and without further vet examinations, the dog could not be placed in another home. ACO Locke said that the dog should not go back to the original owner. The dog was examined, but the vet could not say the dog's issues were from animal abuse, only that the dog needed significant care, which is another thing that I want to know about. So we have in our contract, I don't know if you know this, Steve, but we have in our contract that we're not supposed to seize any animals without um, uh, without uh, notifying the town and working out an arrangement. And the reason that this rather lengthy paragraph eight in our contract went into effect because of horse neglect and the, the tremendous expense that went into seizing those horses and who is going to pay for the care and all of that. So. What what's a little weird here is is that the your person was the one helping us with a Johnson problem. And, and so I want to say this she was helping. You know, she 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 answered a few questions for and it was not in the capacity of ACO. Yeah. I mean she's the Hyde Park ACO. So do you have a mutual aid agreement or anything with Johnson? We do not. No. Okay. So, so what I'm gonna do she is she's just being you know, helping out Dean, helping yeah. out Johnson by, you know, forwarding the information. Yeah, we we got involved in that, and for humane reasons, I'm glad we did, but we shouldn't be. We're going to take care of the bill. We've got to put a stop to it because it's twenty five dollars a day. Right. So right. the money thing is going to be off the table. Okay. What I want to come out of this is a better understanding of okay, how does that work? It happens again. If it happens again, mm -hmm. or or what have you, so yeah. Okay. Uh, did I leave anything from what you know out, Steve? Or um, yeah, I, I don't think so. Yeah. Oh, so what is the disposition of Hades now? Are you guys gonna Are you guys gonna take him? The dog. The okay. dog's name is Hades. Oh, okay. I, I didn't know. Post traumatic stress is I was down there for five years. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so the bat has the dog, and we're going to have to talk to Johnson because, you know, it's their problem. So unfortunately, it looks like the dog will have to be euthanized, and I that bothers me greatly. It does yeah, I, I've, I've met him too. Yeah. So, but the dog is very aggressive. Oh. And I'm going to learn more into it. And if mm -hmm. there's a way that I can not have that happen, uh, even if it costs us a little bit more, 
then that's the outcome I'd like to see. Yeah. But as far as I'm concerned, I don't even know how Hyde Park how Hyde Park got involved in the financial piece of this. So uh, hopefully I'll know more about that. Yeah. So, so yeah. what happens is we have a, a facility, it's called the Hyde Park oh, yeah. um, uh, Lost and Found Dog Impound. Right. And what we do is we offer uh, to, we sublet uh, kennel spaces out to, uh, uh, we have Wolcott and then Morristown and, and Johnson has just signed on. Mm -hmm. They pay uh, an annual fee, a percentage of the rent, and then they pay um, uh, twenty five tw the twenty five dollars a day that the the kennel charges us. So when we drop our dogs the dogs off, it's at the kennel, but we have a, our wing that's ours, is specifically ours, and um, the 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 people who own the kennel actually take care of the animals that are there. That's what the twenty five dollars a day is for. Right. It's a pretty pretty slick setup actually. So if we needed to buy some time. Maybe I could negotiate something about the daily cost or something like that. Well, the, the daily cost, it, that's what we get charged. See, we're actually on the hook. We're, we're the, the lessor, lessee yeah, there. Everybody's subbing to you. The, right. So we're just subletting spaces out to Johnson in a low cut and Morristown. So we, we just do the $25. That's what we're getting charged. Um, I don't know if you can... And we can't really, uh, the kennel doesn't want to deal with someone, uh, a third party. You know, their deal is just, they just want to deal with us. But they well, charge. Why would Johnson pay for $25 a day? Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. And, um, and, and their rack rate, I think they charge almost $50 a day when they, when, if you drop your dog yeah. off there. So that, that's actually a really good price. And they, they, I mean, pay these. Um, I mean, normally they would like a premium for a dog, you know, especially that was as aggressive as he I was. Um, they still only charge this the, the $25 rate. All right. So I'm going to continue to go through you. Well, what we can do is, we, I mean, we have a, these interlocal agreements um, with the towns. You know, we'd be happy to, um, to have you as a partner. Um, the way it is for this year is it's a, a $5,000 annual fee. And then uh, you just pay the twenty five dollars a day. The only caveat is is you're you're in charge of the dogs, you know. You know if you you know you you're there you drop the dog off. I mean they take care of the daily care, but you know if you're bringing it back to the owners or whatever, it's still somebody from your department is going to have to. Yeah. See, we we, I mean we're here for law enforcement stuff. I know, right. So, and, and so we've always really worked well with the animal control folks. So I'm not proposing we get involved here. I'm just, I don't even know if Johnson is aware of this yet. So they will be tomorrow because we'll, we'll get on. Yeah. That. Um, I mean, basically what we did, you know, as a town is we extended you the courtesy of, of using the facility for just our costs and you're not even part of the, uh, you know, our cooperative, um, but, you know, I mean, we just charge you what we're getting charged. Yeah. Yeah. So, but the way I see it is, is this is a Johnson problem. Yeah. Johnson right. should. And yeah. then we got yeah. called in to help. Right. Them. Exactly. And so, you know what? Mishmash of all of us, really. This yeah. Isn't, this isn't the Middle East. We'll figure it out. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, we can work uh, together. but I, I, I kind of want to make people that are owed money whole. So that's why I want to appreciate pay that. things up front here, get the bet bill taken care of, and okay. and that's and uh, just part of value added being with the sheriff's department. We'll, yeah. we'll deal with it. So yeah. so we we'll in touch, Steve, and we'll get this thing sorted out. So appreciate that. Yeah. Okay, so. Excuse me. Oh, I just want to yeah. know, um, Dean Lock is online as well now with us. Oh, okay. Dean, did you? Uh, this is Roger. Did you? Hear me go through what we think the chronology was. Is there any 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 dispute or any changes to that? He's trying to get me on you, I bet. You don't want to do it. I know. <laughs> He's like, yeah. I'm not talking to you, bro. Or Ali, do you have anything to add? No, I don't have anything to add. Just give Dean a minute. He's he's uh 
technology is not his friend sometimes. <laughs> I can identify with that. <laughs> Justin, can you unmute him? I, oh, he's good. Oh, there he is. Hey, sorry about that. <laughs> I'm I'm accessing through my phone. That's a whole different platform than uh, than <laughs> than what I'm used to. Yeah. Um, so uh, back on your on your question. Yeah, I caught most of that. I don't. Uh, everything seems to be you know in the the way you the way you described it chronologically. Um, and uh, and so I think it's great that we're. You know, it it it's it kind of got us, you know, exploring, you know, how we can all work together and do this, and you know, and try and uh, just kind of make it a little cleaner and a little better next time. And uh, and uh, you know, without you guys, uh, without the sheriff department support, you know, and support, uh, you know, you guys supporting us, the ACOs, and we supporting you, you know. We're uh, we're able to do a lot of really good things when it comes to the animals in our community. So we appreciate you. No, no, thank you. And uh, and uh, I know the deputies have worked with you before, and I appreciate it. And we'll get this thing sorted out. Perfect. Thank you so much for that. I hope, I hope we can come to a good resolution for the dog. Mm -hmm. thank you. Talk. And um, have the owners been contacted since the uh, case was dismissed? The the reason the case was dismissed was because the owner, my understanding is the owner has their own challenges. So, and, but the dog can't go back. Uh -uh. You know, he's obviously unable to care for it. Yeah, I, I don't, I talked with, um, I forget the name of the guy up there um, in length, but it, he, he can't be placed anywhere else, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, That's dramatic. Yeah, well, oh, okay. I don't want to be the one dealing with that, but I guess I'm going to have to. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you, Roger. Good to see you. Good to see you. You're okay. Hey, Ron, you're up. What you got for us for an update on the grants? Anything good? No, oh, sure. Wait, me. Roger's got one more thing. Hey, Ron, I'm sorry. Excuse me. I just wanted, I meant to do this even before you walked in the room, but we had that accident with a 17 year old boy mm -hmm. and the job that the fire department did more so in Hyde Park and the EMS and oh. he was in the role with yeah. the record guy <clears throat> and the BD saved, saved that, that kid's life. Oh, no. and yeah. Oh, he is. Yeah. He, he, stopped, he stopped by today. I wasn't there, but he dropped off a bunch of uh, brownies and a very nice. Oh, nice uh, I was going to email his. So I, I just wanted to, to, I wanted to mention that. Hopefully, it's on the record. Oh, great! Thank you. Outstanding job. Yeah. Thank you. By everybody, really, everybody. Good community effort. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Ron. Stop. I don't have Stop. anything as good as that to report. <laughs> so I'm. I'm just reporting on the Grants Watch report, and I can give you all the gory details or just bring you up to speed on the more the uh, two or three of the current projects that are active. I don't, I don't know if you have any questions on the report first, but then I can go over a couple of them which do need action items from you um, at some point. Yeah, I don't think we need all the gory details, Ron. Um, your update, okay. I mean, your report is, is great. You know, I don't know if you guys have any questions, but, um, yeah. fantastic. So unless there's things that you would like to call out specifically, but yeah, yeah, no, I just have three. One is okay. the, um, the, uh, USDA landslide slump project was a uh, bid and open this morning. Steve has the results, uh, that contract will need to be signed at some point so um it's it's really a usda nrcs project and the town's engineer watershed consulting is involved both of those folks usda and watershed need to review and approve the bids and 
basically confirm that the low bidder is uh, is qualified and and valid. All of that might happen in the next several days. So the the question was, how, how would the board like to proceed on that project? Um, what, whether or not Steve or Chastity would be authorized to sign the work contract, uh, not to exceed 79,000, which was the low bid. Um, the second part of that is the grant itself expires January 9th, I think, or January 20th, one of those days. And USDA is recommending that we extend the grant term uh, uh, to get uh, into the next construction season as a precaution. The, the bid went out with a to be complete by December 31st this year, but after, you know, USDA sees a lot of these projects and they're not uh, totally confident that it'll happen. So they said, so there's no overlap. Let's just take our time and get the extension done. If you guys are successful, then uh, great. But if you're not, then at least you'll have the extension to June 30th, 25. So those are the those are the two requests. One's an extension letter that Chastity would need to sign. The other one is the contract, which, like I said, Steve or Chastity could be authorized tonight to sign if the low bid is validated. If the low bid is not validated and there's problems with it, then we'd have to go back to the select board to, to review why, what happened. Okay. So that... The, that's a twofer question. The okay. um, related to that, if you want to keep a list of these things, the VTrans grants. There's three active grants right now, and due to the staff transitions uh, and v, VTrans rules, there needs to be a municipal project manager. And part of that, it's an it's sort of like an a formal appointment where there's a resume and questionnaire and authorization from the select board and a whole bunch of stuff that goes in in order to set that person, which I, I've take, taken that role before, but uh, it transferred to Brent and now it's got to go back to somebody else. And that's the question on VTrans. So st the Stone Shore contract that we have ends in December this year, December 31st for project management. So if the town is interested in continuing that past the end of the calendar year, uh, there's an addendum to the current contract to get through next construction season on those three VTrans grants. That contract has to be reviewed by VTrans because there's, I don't know how many pages, 40 pages or something of mandatory attachments that all have to be signed and, and filed with the state. So if that is of interest, then that's a second question that, again, if uh, Chastity uh, just reviewed it with her really quickly, uh, we can talk about it at length, uh, but we don't have a VTrans approved contract addendum right now. We have, we have a proposed extension of the December 31st deadline uh, to get to November 30th next year, uh, basically all of the construction season next year. And we also, have a cap on the addendum at 19,000 to get, get through November 30th. Uh, most of that, I wanna say most of it, but at least almost half of it's to be reimbursed by the VTrans grants. I, I haven't figured, I haven't completed looking at the other half to see if those are also, also be reimbursed. Um, so I mean, that, that's the VTrans one. The last project is MERP or your energy grants that Elisa Clancy completed for you all and um, Everything was awarded except the town highway garage. Oh, um, that's important. If there's um, yesterday's meeting with the town energy committee, there was discussion about who's going to manage those projects, and that um, it's sort of a little bit problematic in the sense that the MERP grant covered all the parts and pieces, but. I think only one project included administrative time. I don't know why that happened, but anyway, that's the rest of it's on the town's nickel, so to speak, for project management. The issues we have or projecting are what exactly is the scope of work? 
uh, for the grant eligible pieces and what related work might not be eligible and whether the town departments have money and reserves or operating budget to add those elements in. You know, an example might be, you know, throw, putting in a uh, mini split in a wall and the wall framing is rotted and you have to redo the whole, the whole wall for, be for better support. And then you have to paint the wall. Uh, my understanding is that the mini, the MERP grant covers the mini split and some wiring. It doesn't cover painting up the wall or repairing the building. So there, there likely will be some additional work and how do you want to deal with that? So Greg Paws, who's on the energy committee, I, th I think it was half-hearted, but he might've been serious, offered to do the project management, but then the, the committee didn't get to the fee for that or who's who's exactly going to do what. Uh, so in, in the very near future, <laughs> in next Thursday, December 5th, uh, regional planning, Tori Helwig and Steve and um, I, uh, Lisa said she's conflicted out and any, any of the town department heads that are affected by the grant are going to meet at 10 o'clock to get into those kind of details. And it, it may be perfectly fine. It may be the grant covers 100% of the work and there's no additional work. Um, what we're going to get confirmation on are, are things like project management and who does that and any of that potential extra work to make sure that if there is extra work that the departments have a way to pay for it. Um, so those are the three, you know, sort of active projects. We do also have a, a, this is not related. This is related to all Hyde Park projects. Next Tuesday at 10 o'clock is a all projects meeting with watershed consulting uh, regarding highway planning um, for construction year 2025. You have enough work going on that's at various different stages that uh, Mark French and Ryan and uh, Watershed, uh, Trafton Crandall, who's the the PE, it, including Jen on cash flow, really all need to be thinking about 2025 now and not waiting till spring when uh, things are just almost too busy to do good, thoughtful planning. So we're we're doing that on December third, and then on the fifth we're going to do MERP. So those, th th I think they'll they'll be a lot better understood with all the departments by the end of next week. Um, so what that leads for tonight is really just the is the USDA um, slumps award. It's seventy nine thousand for the Brook Road in Centerville. Or, I'm sorry, Brook Road in Garfield Road slides. Uh, the extension request to USDA through June thirtieth for the grant funding, which hopefully we won't need, and the Stone Shore addendum to deal with the uh, the core VTrans projects through. Uh, next November thirtieth, with a with a cap at nineteen thousand. Uh, what I didn't talk about yet is just you know the, I've been assisting the town generally, whether it's Jen or Steve or or Mark on a on a general question or historical question. Um, I haven't included any of that in in trying to project out what that means to the town. I know um, we're you know, going through the town administrator reorganization and discussion still. So there's no uh, resolution there. Uh, but I did let Chastity know that I'm okay with continuing to keep things moving, but I did, we did need that a contract addendum in order to, to satisfy VTRANS requirements and get those reimbursements going under those specific projects. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So, for, these are the bids from today. I wrote them all down. So CCS was low bid at 79,000. Um, so let's do a motion to, ex no, we need a motion to have me sign the contract yeah, sign it, right. once it's approved by USDA and that they're a viable contractor. Make that motion, yes. Okay, second. Should I do that? Oh, no, you shouldn't actually. No, Susan, can we? Yeah, I'll second. I was going to say, yeah, I need to second, right? Yep. Uh, perfect. Yes. I'm going to abstain. Yeah. All Justin. those. Yeah. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, abstained. 
Um, yeah, that's me. So I need to vote, correct? How does that work? Do I need to vote? You should. You yeah. can. You can. Yeah. Why not? Because then we, because we wouldn't have a quorum vote, right? right? If you don't, right? Okay. So I okay. Perfect. Um. And so Ron's contract. Um. Just so you're aware, we B trans is it's pretty much making not making us, but it's a requirement for us to get reimbursed. And we are waiting for, I think, then 60K or so right now until we do this addendum for Ron's contract. Mm -hmm. um, and it will go through November 30th, um, 2025, capped at 19K. Um, so if we can have um, a motion to have me sign that once it's approved and good with VTrans. Um, and you guys are good with that. I'll move it. Motion for that, okay. Second. I'll second that. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, perfect. Okay. And to extend the through July, June 30th, right? The USDA. This letter. Oh. Extension, yeah. So I signed it. Do we need to also do a motion? We need to make a motion for you to sign it. Yeah, yeah. You, sh you should on this because it's a federal process and they want to see authorization for anybody to sign. I make a motion for Tassie to sign it. <laughs> second. I'll second yeah. that. No. Well, good favorite. idea. Okay. Aye. 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 Yeah, we it's I don't know who's gonna you know there's so many different projects that having authorizations like um, you know on a list because Steve's authorized for FEMA, Chastity may have been pre-authorized for all USDA, but we I couldn't find that, so we have to go piecemeal each time. Okay. Uh, you know, so however you guys want to sort that out, it's just it, I, I was just thinking of that today that with all the it helps the board because you don't need to see every little step. And usually there's a cap on the money. So as long as things are going under the cap, things are okay. And then the you know, authorization sort of ends if there's a problem or or these expenses look like they're going to get out of hand. So okay. it's it's a good way to go, but keeping track of it was it was missing on this one. Okay. And I think Elisa was authorized on MERP, but she said she's got a new job and she's too busy to do anything much anymore, but she'll try to help. So I don't know if Steve needs MERP, you know, so <laughs> eventually we'll have to get that together. Jen needs them for the file, which is the main point, because she'll she'll need to see, uh, she'll need to keep authorizations in her grant folder. Okay. okay. Uh, one last thing, What Jen okay. just chatted, she just had to jump out to get a kid from basketball practice, but she asked the question about a uh, waiver of the purchasing policy for the uh, USDA bid. Now, what happened there is um, under FEMA rules, typically the uh, FEMA procedure is a three-week minimum bid on the Vermont bid registry. In this case, it was about a 10-day notice. Yeah. And I don't think, and I didn't see it, but the purchasing policy for the town, whether you have a minimum period, I think it just says advertise kind of thing, or, you know, put it out for publication, those kind of, so all that stuff was done. It's just, we want to get it on the docket tonight for the minutes that the uh, select board was okay with the 10 day window for the, for the USDA um, bid. bid for the bid. Yeah. Okay. So without objection, I think it's okay just to make that note in the minutes. Kind okay. Of that we were we were good with that ten day. And especially given the number of bids we have. Oh, I know. Yeah, we had um eight eight bids. Them. I don't know if you guys want to peek at those while we're talking. Um. Okay. Cool. Thank you, Ron. Yeah, that's all. I don't. I looked at the agenda. I don't see a lot for me tonight, unless you had something. We got a long agenda. <laughs> so we do, and that's why I put you at the top, actually. Justin and I talked about that so you wouldn't have to hang out if you didn't want to. So yeah. I mean I, I can watch it on YouTube or something, but yeah, but yeah, we're good. <laughs> I need you, I'll call you. 
<laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to sign off if I'm good, okay. and we'll uh, we'll keep you posted. Okay. Thank you, Ron. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. Hey, Ch Chastity. Yeah. Um, we just need to clarify those motions because that was a little bit fast for me. Okay. Um. Yep. Go ahead. We have a motion made by Savannah to authorize Chastity to sign the USDA bid contract for seventy nine thousand. Seconded by Susan and Nicole abstained. Correct. And do we and you can put CC? You can put CCS on there as a low bidder. Yes. And it's to sign the contract once USDA has approved that they are qualified bidder. That was should be in the motion. And should we put the exact amount or just 79,000 even? That is the exact amount. Oh, it is. Oh, okay. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> okay. And then motion made by Savannah to authorize Chastity to sign the grant extension, seconded by Nicole. Uh -huh. Correct. Yeah, you should specify EWP 5041 through June. 3025. That's the extension request. <clears throat> um okay. To authorize Chastity to sign the EWP-5041 grant extension through June 2025. June 30th, 2025. June 30th. Yeah, it's an extension request. Request. Yep. Okay. Thank you. And then the second motion was made, or third motion was made by Susan, seconded by Savannah. But I didn't really catch what that motion was. Was that for Ron's contract? So I'm sure. Yeah. Yes. We're... That was uh, cap capped at 19,000 through November 30th, 2025, contingent on VTRANS review and approval. Yes. Ron, do we have to um, post those uh, bids anywhere? Uh, no, we're not posting it. What I'll, what I'll do is I'll jump on the state bid registry and update that, which updates all the bidders that way. Um, I'll just post CCS at 79,000 uh, contingent out of, you know, review kind of thing. But um, you or Kim or Jen should all have copies in case somebody asks for it. Other, other than that, no. Are you good, Justin? I am good. Thank you very much. Okay, you're welcome. Um, All-terrain ordinance, we're good with that, right? I'm good. I'm out. <laughs> no, you're good. Yep. Bye, Ron. Bye bye. Happy Thanksgiving. You too. <laughs> you too. Um, I believe we are good on that one. Uh, yeah. Tim needs to sign the acknowledgement form saying that all all the processes have been gone through. Okay. So I don't think there's any other steps. I wasn't able to connect with Kim since okay. we discussed, but. Okay, clean fill policy. Everybody good to approve that. Susan, did you get a chance to review the clean fill policy? Yeah, it looked, I mean, it makes sense. <laughs> I make a motion to approve them. Perfect, clean fill policy. I'll second that. Yeah, and actually, yeah, I think we want a motion to actually to adopt. The to adopt it? Oh, adopt. okay. Yeah. Adopt. I make the motion to adopt the clean bill policy. Perfect. A second? I'll second that. Okay. All those in favor, yeah. signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. Perfect. Uh, speed limit signage. Actually, Jen gave us an update on that in her. Yeah. So we'll skip over that for right now. 
Um, land use regulations adoption. Did everybody read that and understand that? I mean, I read it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Notice I added understand in there. Um, um, yeah. I'm going to let Stephen yeah. speak on this. <laughs> The majority of the updates were um, having to do with the new uh, state mandated housing uh, okay. regulation. So we had to basically loosen up all of our um, you know, like accessory dwelling requirements. And one of the currently, well, not currently, because we've actually, we, we can't do that now, but our bylaws say, and it was a state statute, <clears throat> excuse me, that an accessory detached accessory dwelling couldn't be any more than 30 percent of the size of the original house oh. that's gone so you can build a, an adu bigger than your original house it can only be one unit but you can build it any size that you want size. okay i knew about this okay yeah. I, I work in housing and i knew that this was happening because you know this is how this is how they think they're yeah. gonna Fix the housing. Fix the housing problem. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is restricting the the how much hold the towns can have on um, zoning. Yeah, right. And it well, actually it loosens up a lot. Yeah. They're, they're trying to make it attractive and, and gotcha. more friendly for people to do it. So no, one of the things that they did were um, for if you wanted to put it in uh, an accessory dwelling in your house, you can do that, and it doesn't affect the density. Um, because we have uh, requirements in certain districts uh, for, for how much density you can have for housing. Oh, so exactly. now doing this, you can put an ADU in your house and it doesn't affect the, the density. Oh, interesting. So, yeah, so you have no, no impact there. And you can still, even with doing that, you can still do a detached accessory, accessory dwelling. Okay. So... So so wait so you could do I could do an attachment to my house and an an independent one, right? Mm -hmm. Wow. Hmm. Okay. And that's I mean these these uh, it's called the Homes Act. It's going to sunset I think in twenty seven. So unfortunately, we'll have to revisit the uh, zoning bylaws then, because um, uh, like currently. You, you couldn't put um, a, a second home on your right. property unless you had the acreage. So like if you're in the RR5 right. district, right. only one uh, dwelling per five acres. So if you wanted to put another dwelling on there, even if it's an ADU, you got to have 10 acres. 10 but acres. with this Thanks. new act, you can put another, regardless of how many uh, acres that you have and the density. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So, pros and cons to that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and the, one of the big things that we, the detached ADUs, is it has to stay an ADU, meaning it's an accessory to the primary <laughs> dwelling. So if the person uh, lives there, then they can have an ADU and even have a, <clears throat> an, uh, an accessory dwelling in their house. Like they can't move out of their house and then rent out all three units uh, for that, uh, right, for that right. attached ADU for that to stay compliant. The owner has to stay on the property. On the property, mm -hmm. and we specifically put in that there's no exception for subdivision. So these people put on an ADU and then they want to sell, and nobody wants to buy two houses, and then like, oh, we'll just subdivide. You no, know, those those same regulations are going to apply. Okay. We specifically put that in there. So that the uh, okay, the, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Folks seeing it as a fight, an easy way to get around it, right? Yeah, yeah. Huh. yeah. We did. Uh, I have a question. Yeah. yeah. Um, just thinking about this, how would we regulate that? Like, say someone comes up here and buys one of these ADU houses or do whatnot, and they move away. They rent one of them out, and then they rent the other one half time or part or live at part time. How much do they have to occupy that? Do they need to file a homestead? Like what? How does that get gauged? No, it, it, it basically would have to be their um, primary dwelling in Vermont. So I think you know if they 
I don't, some of the tests are like 181 days, but I don't think, I don't think this would apply because that's really more for a homestead. We're just con concerned about being an accessory, accessory to the, the main house. So as long as they're the occupant, regardless of how much they're there and they, uh, they own the house, then, then we're fine. So they can't like live in California and rent both of them out. Right. Be able to. Right. Right. Yeah. Or they can, they could technically, they could, they they could, could leave, be. basically leave one empty, you know, or just have that, you know, their, yeah. their second home because, yeah. you know, that's their primary dwelling in Vermont. Yeah. Okay. So okay. yeah, they could mm. leave it open and have an accessory dwelling in the unit and then a detached one. Oh. Wow. Okay. Thank you. And addressed um, these things called cluster housings. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Susan, yeah. <laughs> um, we addressed uh, tiny homes. Oh. oh, okay. You know, a lot of people didn't understand. They just thought you just wheel one of these in and you park it. And it it, it yeah. doesn't work that way. Yeah. Um, we also uh, addressed. Um, uh, I don't want to say not mobile homes, but um, campers, oh, mm -hmm. you know, fifth wheels. Yep. Yeah, you can't live in them. Okay. Um, let's see. And we, we've made some clarifications about, um, we've had um, on the DRB side, uh, some issues with conflicts with uh, state permits. Um, so we made, we made our permits subordinate to the state permits. Mm -hmm. So, Example is if um, they come in and they get a wastewater permit for a three bedroom, they're not getting a permit from us for a four bedroom. Right. You, know, you get it. Right. There's just, there's no, and um, you know, if it's a commercial, if the state says, you know, you can only be open from nine to five, then that's all we're going to authorize. You know, even if we right. think, you know, well, six is reasonable, we're not going to contradict. Doesn't matter. Yep. State permit. Could you contradict the state prior? Oh, or yeah, yeah. We, no kidding. We actually have um, we have a court case right now. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. You, oh, interesting. You, okay. Yeah. Um, and I think just just a few other made some wording changes to things just to to mm -hmm. clarify it's things that like slipped through the cracks. Mm -hmm. Just things that I ran into when people were asking me and like, oh. Oh, I don't know. So oh, yeah. I made it clear in the, the new bylaws. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we need to we need a motion to adopt the new bylaws. Um, not yet, it looks like. And according to a statute and reading that further and the email from LCPC, it looks like the select board needs to hold its own formal hearing. A, a that's a legislative hearing. body. Yeah. Yep. So we reviewed it here, but we need to warn it again for 15. Um, so the planning commission held one, but from what look, appears, they're not considered to be the legislative body. Yeah. That makes no sense to me, but yeah, you already, tell me what we need to do. Yeah, it was, <laughs> yeah, it was warned and we had a public uh, comment yeah, with the planning commission. So ah, okay. we, we already, yeah, so everybody's, you know. Right. And we but, just do the same thing for the select board, right? For our next meeting. So we, we just wait. But we have it on the agenda. So. But you don't have it for public comment. Got it. And I made a note here um, in the staff packet that. Hmm. Yeah, so it references statute 24 uh, VSA 4442 and 4441. The select board is requested to review the updated bylaws at this meeting and pose any questions for the planning commission dash commissioner and hear any public comments on the changes. Right. Um, yeah, but that's the, the planning commission has already. There considered an um an advisory board right right oh well, yeah but this it sounds like they're asking this is like do we get ahead of ourselves because the um no the plan the planning commission basically what the planning commission is doing is recommending up to the select board 
And then we say, oh, yeah. And then we give the public another chance to to if somebody, you know, some of you, th you think of your best question after you leave the meeting. So if some folks have some other questions, this net, this is another opportunity for them to ask questions about what it is and what it means. So this is it. Uh, pose any questions for the uh, the planning commission. Um, Hopefully we don't have any, because otherwise I think we'd have to warn the, the meeting for the planning commission to do that. Right. I, I think, what well, because of course, Steve, obviously you can answer any of the questions so that at that meeting in front of the select board of people ask questions, you'd have someone from the planning commission or you're there who can answer the questions. Okay. Okay. I remember doing this previously. Okay. <laughs> and so then I was... Put that on the next meeting. Just then. Most do it in January. In January? According to his note. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Don't worry, Justin. She's got you. Okay. January meeting. It's a lot more time for public hearings. Right. Got it. Okay. All right. Okay, Stephen, what else you got for us? Okay, so All this is, yeah, um, so I think the authorization, this is a, a amendment for a grant for, from the Department of Housing and Community Development. Mm -hmm. um, I can get authorized to sign on behalf of the town, actually, and they call it redundancy, uh, chastity also to sign okay. on behalf of the town for this. Okay. Okay. Um, so, um, and then this also needs to be signed. Okay, what is that one for? Um, this is the amended resolution. And basically, um, it's approved by Eric, the uh, planning commissioner. Oh, okay, okay. So he signed it, and then we had to put the names of the, uh, the I'm the primary uh, person, and then you're the, the, the redundant person. Got it, got it. Nothing <laughs> personal, but okay. Yeah. Oh. That's, what they, that's what they call it. That's right. Okay. I'm redundant in life. Okay. Yeah. Right. There you go. Okay. So motion to I'll make the motion for you both to sign it. I'll second that. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, abstained. Okay. Yeah. What was the name of that document? I'm sorry? Well, uh, what's the name of that document? The FY24 municipal resolution for municipal bl planning grant. FY24 resolution municipal. for municipal planning grant. Correct. Uh, basically, it's to do, do the, uh, the the town plan. Okay. Yeah, oops, uh, print name and that's I think. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Is that all you have for us, Stephen? Okay. Uh, the. Uh, do you guys have can we talk about the union conversation or should we ask Ryan to leave or does that have to be executive <laughs> yeah I think it probably is executive probably yeah okay. I'm sorry I need the, oh sorry the whole... right. oh we need yeah. everybody needs to sign up so um let's see yeah, okay so uh Johnson has signed on to um the agreement they the select board uh, accepted it and they were actually very happy with it oh, and the uh, town administrator is very happy to have this uh this available for the town pretty awesome um, right the yeah, it sounds like we've got this resolved with the with yeah. Hades. um that's been a, a tough i've been working on that for yeah well over a week i'm glad that's um, poor dog so that uh oh yeah i'm I'm glad that's done. Yeah. Um, now that we have the uh, issue with um, Franklin, Franklin. Mm -hmm. um, they they sent us a, a check for um, like seven hundred and sixty seven dollars, and they highlighted a ten day hold, um, and I copied the um, uh, printed out the uh, their minutes, and basically said, well, no, you know, nobody said that. Nobody signed us saying, you know, we're going to pay for this. And that was their logic. Okay, fine. You know, let's, let's just send them 500 bucks and call it a day. Um, but that doesn't work for me. Mm -hmm. um, I agree. I've been through a lot of this stuff. Um, 
one of the things is um, it was it was only for 10 days. Or said they have they highlighted the 10 day hold. Well, they were supposed if they use that logic, then they should have come and gotten their dogs after 10 days. Correct. Okay, we're not yeah. a humane society, we're the Hyde Park Kennel. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they didn't. Um, Brent called them after 20 days and says, Your dogs are still here. Mm -hmm. They still didn't come get them. I went through their Facebook page and they advertised these dogs for adoption well into September. So they're still saying that they were their dogs and they needed to be adopted out. This great. Um, we, this yeah. is great. You're like a detective. Yeah, I know. So that's what, yeah. And so, and also I have uh, uh, emails and texts um, where Lisa says, oh, sorry, we didn't realize that, you know, it's beyond the 10 days and we're working to find a home. And this is, you know, late September. So this whole time, they're not saying the dogs weren't theirs. I mean, there's just evidence mm -hmm. that they're accepting responsibility for the dogs. So, um, and there's, there's other evidence that it keeps going on. And uh, so I'm just going to demand the entire payment. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to point out to them, you know, first of all, we did them a courtesy. Right. You know, we did them a big courtesy. Yeah. And Allie did so much. Allie went and she got found. She got money for those two dogs to be spayed. Yes. You know, she set it up, did all the work for uh, them to get adopted out. You know, we didn't get paid for that. Yeah. You know, so these guys got $5,000 worth of services easy. Yeah. And they're, you know, there's just saying like, well, you know, you, you didn't say we had to pay it. Well, <laughs> That's that's no logic. If you go to a hotel, right. they don't say to you, okay, you have to pay for this room. You know that, right? When you go in, no, yeah. because there's the presumption. You know, you get to, you, know, you have to pay. You have to pay. And, and the, ta the taxpayers of Hyde Park are not going to pay for two dogs right. for Franklin. So, I mean, there's no logical way anybody could assume that they could just drop these dogs after 10 days and wash their hands. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and there's something in there, too, where it says that they... Um, the dogs are surrendered to the town. That was another thing. And she gave us permission to adopt the dogs out. So there's just so much stuff in there. Yeah. But in the, after the 10 day hold, if they were going to, if they thought we were just going to keep the dogs, then the dogs would have had to have been surrendered to us because they're not our dogs. So right. that 10 day hold actually had nothing to do with the town of Hyde Park. It's with Frank, town of Franklin and the dog owners, and they didn't, you know, give us any surrender documents. So this is no, no paper trail, no evidence that we accepted the dogs from them. They were in their possession and their responsibility the whole way through. I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. Doing all that. So get from That's right. Go for it. Well, it just yeah. it makes me mad because I mean, we did them a huge favor. Yeah, I, agree. I mean, we did them a, a solid, and they really shouldn't be in a inter town. You know, they shouldn't. They shouldn't be doing that. If they ever need a place again, or like, I know, know. Yeah. right? Yeah, they're yeah. gonna they're gonna pay heavily, and they're gonna pay up front. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. Oh, okay. Oh, Northside Park welcome signs update. That Justin, is that you or you? Um, I saw something in there. Something about mm -hmm. something and then meeting and land, land owner. owner's, owner's permission and all the things. So um my plan is that we're gonna end up doing just two signs. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And one is gonna be at the property that um the FEMA property that we purchased. Okay. One there and I go through there. That's the way I come to work, and I really like the um, where the 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 National Guard Armory is. Yeah, I mean that's that's like a real prime place, and it's just on the outside. I get all all that you know road frontage with mm -hmm. nothing to do. So I'm thinking about you know approaching them. Yeah, okay. Yes, I mean, they should. I would think want to be uh, friendly to the. Yeah, the town. yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah. and I yeah. agree. That is a good. Spot for it. Yeah, this probably updates you on that FEMA property. Okay. Um, so we had to do a lead assessment, then an asbestos. And the assessment that they did, which is so frustrating, the way they checked for lead 
is they go around the house and they take samples, you know, basically the paint sample. Mm -hmm. So they take them and then they put them in one jar, basically. So then they take the jar and they send it off somewhere and they say, yep, there's lead in there and it's over this amount. So the the, the firm that did the um, the assessment, like, well, yeah, you have to treat the, because uh, there's contamination um, and we don't know where it is. So we have to treat the entire structure as hazardous. Hazardous, okay. Which is like eight times the cost to get rid of it. So I worked with Casella and they're like, we saw that they, they said, but those numbers, we don't even know how she did. She must have like found some like lead, one thing of lead paint and just like shoveled it wow. in. Cause he said that the, the numbers were like really high. So he goes, work with these endine people. And he goes, cause there's, he says there's lead in everything. Yeah. And it's the hope, the percentage of the whole building. You know, so really, you're just talking like a thin, you know, yeah. there's a, a paint. So it's not like a percent. I mean, it's 0.003% of the, the mass going in is lead. And children's toys got lead in. Right. Yeah. yeah. So what I did is I, I went, I got the, the a kit, and I did my own lead assessment. <laughs> I found out where it was. So basically, it is the most of the exterior of the house. Mm -hmm. some lead paint sure but not the the windowsill which i thought were actually the main culprit but yeah. it turns out they weren't oh interesting. The hmm. okay so basically the almost the the entire structure on the outside is lead paint and one door going to the basement okay so we're trying to now um, get uh to squeak that by okay and we have a time period right where that has to be cleaned up yeah they, they, just in like a 90 day okay um, period um you can get an extension okay. um because this took forever i mean we had actually planned on closing it in i want to say june or july <coughs> September. Right. so well, i was pushing like you know we got these deadlines and i don't want to be in the winter and dave uh, our attorney mm -hmm. town's attorney uh, spoke with fema and said listen this is taking me a while can we get an extension She's like, yeah, no problem. Oh, great. Okay. So oh, we'll be yeah. able to extend it. But um, with this weather that we're having, you know, it's, it still might be feasible. Oh, true. Yeah. yeah. And I was working with some local people, but um, I, I live in Enosburg, and they had three FEMA properties on the corner. I'm not sure if you're familiar with, with Enosburg, but you go where the bridge, where the, the municipal building and the little power plant is. Like you'd be coming from yes. Bakersfield, man. Mm -hmm. So they took three houses there on the corner down. And those guys, um, they made quick work of that. Oh. I mean, they, they go come through one day, they're tearing it down. And I come home the next day, everything's gone and they got straw down. So these guys aren't messing around. So okay. I called the uh, the village of Edinburgh and said, yes. who are these guys? Yeah. Yeah. Do some. Oh, great. Okay. Um, okay, Stephen, I don't know if you back up. I also recommend contacting All Metals Recycling in Hardwick if you want to get another quote. I've worked with them on a few different quotes. I haven't actually had them do the work just because the projects haven't worked out, but they've given me three quotes on three projects and they were all pretty reasonable. Yeah, well, yeah, actually, we've um, in anticipation of this, I uh, because we were so behind, I actually took care of um, most all the metal has been uh, taken out of there. Um, oh, uh, they do full demolition. Full demolition. They'll take they'll oh. take down the whole house, metal, wood, anything. Yeah, I think the the um, the, the contractor, the excavator guy, is probably the one who will. Uh, decide you know who's going to use for the containers because that's really their gig uh i mean they will all metals also has an excavator like they'll do it, their one-stop shop like they'll come in with the excavator oh, with the dumpsters okay. take it all away like do the whole thing yeah i don't know if i called them i, I called a lot of people and most of them didn't <laughs> call me back yeah if you call them you tell them what you want they'll come in with machines and they'll load into their dumpsters. Okay. Okay. i prefer to use somebody local from from yeah. county. Well, both 
Did they well, two of the owners live in Hyde Park, right. so they could probably swing up and okay. see it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I didn't know that. That's good. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah thank you. That's a, a good take there. There we go. Okay. Anything else? No, I think that's it. For okay. Perfect. Thank you. Um, we never did hear back about the Lamoille Fiber rep, did we? Remember, I emailed Bob. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I haven't heard. I haven't either. So let me follow up again. Follow up again on that. Um, office space. Did you? Yeah. Where did that land? Okay, so oh, um. Yeah, so I think we decided that we're going to do the town administrator's uh, office in the newly created, one of the newly created space, the one that's vacant now. Yes. Basically. Um, and where we um, were uh, looking, we, we did a pretty big analysis of where we're going to move things. And in the, the break room, for lack of a, where Brent had his uh, office. So if you go, I don't know if we wanted to go up, but um, so basically, the um, we'll say like the the TV is the window mm -hmm. that's in that room. So <clears throat> we looked at it, and we can actually run a wall um, from the window to where the where you come in the door. There's next on the other side of the wall. There's a um, uh, a closet, but so that so that sticks out into the um, that that room. But just running a, from that straight from that part right down uh, to right next to the window um, creates a, a pretty simple space. Um, it's not huge, but Justin was good with it. Mm -hmm. And over here, um, we're just going to blow out um, the wall a little bit just in a small window. And that'll be the Lister space. The Lister space. So then they'll have their own space. And then over here in the rest of the break, we're going to put that table back. So we have the uh, yeah. cool. Sounds great. That takes care of that, which is good. We want Justin to be happy. As long as he has a window, <laughs> right? As long as I have a window. Thank you. <laughs> Way to utilize our space, right? <clears throat> uh, okay. Uh, monthly newsletter. Yeah, so if, if anyone has any additions, questions, I see there's been a couple responses since I sent it out this afternoon. Oh, that's a good place to put the public comment, right? For the bylaws, maybe? Not now, but oh, yeah, maybe in December's issue. Oh yeah, I made a note about that. Um, that the land use regulations and bylaws are changing, and okay. I was gonna have a little insert in there for the whenever we decide, which I guess is the January meeting. Yeah. 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 Cool. Justin, you got my note right. There. No. Nope. The Hyde Park Community Circle. Looks like it. Looks like yeah. I, I see your name in my inbox. Perfect. There <laughs> we go. Hey, Justin. You might not hear you. Uh, yep. Did you put something in there about the parking van on the village street? I would love to. Yeah, I put an uh, insert there for that. So if you have a little write-up or something you'd like me to put in there. Don't park on the village streets. Well, <laughs> <laughs> but it's at midnight to email a. right email the details to justin and then he can put it in there is that is that from the the village so it's mm -hmm. probably oh, there yeah. that's not a parking yeah, yeah. It, it, it's park on the village street we got signs out it's it's all, all everybody has them right now yeah like it's yeah. it's standard from yeah. november 15th to april 15th from midnight to 7 a.m yeah. i just didn't know if it's in our ordinances or the I know we own the roads, but I don't know. Yeah, I think so it's probably not there. Yeah. Okay, so I'll yeah. get that. I'll, if we have it, I'll get it to Justin. Perfect. So actually, even if we don't have it, I'll get it from the village to get it to Justin. 
Oh, true. Right. Either way, yeah, you can put it in. Email wrong. I'm going to have it. Too. I don't know. Yeah. I think he's the one that's using it. Okay. I mean, thankfully, snow's been off to a slow start. So people have been, it hasn't been like boom. Right. But this weekend. It's coming. Um, municipal plan update for planning commissions. Mm -hmm. Is that you, Justin? Yes. Yep. And just give me one second here. Pull this one up. Okay. okay, yep. So at the November 12th Planning Commission meeting, they discussed that, well, they held the hearing for the amendments to the land use regulations and bylaws. Uh, they continued discussing Chapter 5 for transportation, uh, Chapter 6 for housing, and started Chapter 7 for economic development. The Planning Commission will be meeting on the first Tuesday of the month, starting in December at 6 p.m. instead of the second Tuesday of the month. And we will be working with the Village Planning Commission to schedule meetings because the way we've been going doesn't seem to work for both commissions uh, mutually. So we may have a joint meeting. So we'll have the plan, the village plan commission meeting that they hold, the town that we hold, and then a joint meeting separately as we go along. Um, that'll be further discussed in December at the meeting there. Usually the process continues to be um, we have the initial discussion the the initial discussion of a topic supply edits to it and then it gets represented with the edits at the next meeting and then we add another chapter and have the initial and then it cycles through anticipating to be done I believe in June or May or June of next year so. That's my update. The meeting minutes are pre-detailed and the minutes and recording are both on the website. Okay, great. Thank you, sir. Okay, the minutes. Did you guys find anything? No, I didn't either. Can I have a motion to accept those? I'll make the motion to accept them. I'll second. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Well, I wasn't I wasn't there. I have to abstain. Yep. Okay. Can I go off topic? Am I allowed to? Go Can on. I ask if you, you went to Gary's house? You and Matt? Oh, we'll talk about that. Down. Okay. We'll do Jen so she can get going because she's got a lot of Sounds finance good. stuff. And then we can talk about that. Okay. Yes. okay. So Jen has been busy, as you can see. Um, we have been working hard, meeting with all the committees um, for the budget. Um, it's It's gone pretty well. We've officially met with everybody but REC, right, Jen? Yeah. REC and unofficially highway. Oh, true, unofficially highway, yeah. Um, so Jen is hoping um, to have, you know, a preliminary numbers to us for our first budget meeting in December. That's the plan. Um, I don't know if you guys have any comments on what she's already giving you so far. Um, uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's good. But um, so that's good. Um, sure, he came tonight, so we don't. That's I put that on there for that. Um, and Jen, you need a whole slew of motions tonight. Yes, please. Okay, <laughs> but I love the detail of it all. Yeah, it all makes so yeah, it's, fun. it's always great. I appreciate it. Um so I do we need a motion for each ARPA thing, Jen, or can we do one big motion for the for the re-obligated amount? Or I think we have to do them separate. Because ARPA is pretty particular, right? So we want to make sure we do that right. Right. Yeah. So unfortunately. 
Okay, no, that's fine. Do do wrong. So we'll do a separate, do one for each. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Turns. Please. That's great. Okay, I'll go first. Go to no, town, sorry. ladies. Go to <laughs> town. Jen, makes, or it Justin. So easy. Jen yeah. makes it so easy for him. Yeah, but he should have this. Oh, true. Okay. So wait a minute. Let's go back. We, we need to talk about this North Hyde Park. I North Hyde Park prayer. So well, because something wasn't right in something, and I just want to read it. Okay, so I've attached the meeting minutes when I it was originally. Okay, I got that. I can't read. What are these tools one. that they use? I just want to make sure I understand. These are for like what are these tools they use for? Yeah, so they, they were cutting well, or yeah, something. It's the batteries and stuff. It's right now they're not they weren't electric, so they're gas powered and they're big and they're okay. well, even though and they wanted okay, something so not updated than the I know. Other things. Okay. He came in about that one. Yeah, we've already he did. I know, that. I know he does, oh. but I just I had just I had some questions about oh, okay. after the motion. Yeah. But anyway. Okay, so you make a motion to pay half from ARPA and half from the reserve fund with the expenditures each. Okay, so we just need to clarify the original motion, Jen, correct? Yeah, you guys talked about it twice. And the first time, I think it was like close, but there was well, questions in the minutes. Because he priced it out once and then prices changed from the second time and everything got all confused. Correct. That was why it got all weird. Okay, so I move that we pay half of the North High Park Fire Department safety equipment out of ARPA and half out of the reserve fund, each totaling 115375 Okay, second. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain. Okay, that one's done. Okay. This is the security cam in camera installation. Mm -hmm. um, I'll make the motion to increase the Obligation from the ARPA funds for the security and office upgrades to $13,000 with Brian Pena and Robert Hill um, installing new cameras. Second. I'll second that. Oh, wait, I probably oh. shouldn't. Oh, right. You might. Yeah, you probably shouldn't. That's shouldn't. a conflict. Yep. Just kidding. Susan. Uh, yeah, I'll second it. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Nicole's abstaining from that. Justin. Family. Okay, there's a security camera. Okay. Okay. Hey, oh, so, Jen, I just want to make sure because I know ARPA's picky. The, I understand what the Opera House wants to do, and I think that's great that they have money left. Right. We have to reallocate the spending of that money to that issue or can they just do it so they're technically a beneficiary and i just need to get some clarification on whether or not i need to give them a subrecipient agreement that they should sign before the 31st of december so that's something that i need to do on my half but okay um, so we don't have to do anything about them but good job good job upper house yes all right. So, so we just need to. We're now de obligating money. money. Yeah. All right. So I make the motion that we de obligate the remaining $1,707 in the rec budget. Of unspent. Of unspent money. Yeah. yeah. Unspent ARPA funds. Right. Oh, unspent ARPA funds. Okay. Second. Oh, second. second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Okay. We're going to deobligate some more, too. I will make the motion to deobligate the remaining $1,194 left in the fire vehicle repairs. Okay. Second. Second. Either one of us. <laughs> All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Abstained? Aye. Okay, you can do this one. So. <laughs> I'll make the motion to deobligate the remaining uh, $11. $11 for the temporary shelter for dogs. 
I'll second that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I oh, wish Matt was here for that one. I know, me too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We made, we made a little call there, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor of this interview, I'm going to say it. Hi. 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 Okay. Okay, so now I make a motion that we de-obligate the remaining $6 <laughs> of the cemetery fencing project of ARPA funds. I'll second. Uh, second that. Woo. All those in favor, I'm signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Who's favored? Yeah, she just because they're just mapping out. It was on Robbie, right? Oh, yeah. No, because they're just because they're, because they're because they're because they're expanding over that way and and adding more plots over there. So they're just like they're just kind of protecting like where they're going to be selling more plots to. You weren't here for public comment. You just sit there and be quiet. That was uh, oh, wait, <laughs> go back and watch the minutes on YouTube. <laughs> um. Okay. <laughs> so those are all her arpas. Um. We skipped over the bonuses um so um nicole just so for past we've we've always given recognition christmas bonuses um so jen gave us i saw that in the email oh there it is right here there it is. Um, so for the highway department and the administrative department administration department so oh and library Library will be presented by the library trustees. You got it. To be determined. Okay. Yep. And then you're going to pick out the ACOs. Okay. Cool. Okay. So do we have any discussion on that? Any thoughts on that? No? If not, can we get a motion? <laughs> Just oh. do it. Be a scrooge. <laughs> 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 yeah, can we use the leftover ARPA money for that? <laughs> Do bigger bonuses. Okay, we um, have finances. Okay. I keep losing this stuff on my screen. Okay, so that you got we have the motion for the bonuses for the appreciations, or whatever we call it. Uh recognition. Oh, no, Thank appreciation. You. Excuse me, appreciation. Appreciation, right. Appreciation bonuses. Yes. No, I don't have a motion. I need a okay. motion. Okay, I'll, I'll move. Thank you. Second. That we appreciate our staff. <laughs> second. I'll second that. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain. Perfect. Um. Is there any way I can get you guys to sign that? Just one copy of it? Sure. It's in the packet. Oh. Yep. I wrote on mine, so I'll sign Stevens. Um, so I'm Jen, all the things we've signed down here just so that you know. Okay. Yeah. Susan, I got some things that if you're around at some point, if you could sign. Okay. I'll uh, actually, I'll stop in tomorrow. How's that? Okay. Yeah, I'll leave them. Oh, actually, uh, office is closed tomorrow. I'm here. I'll be there for the morning with my children. Okay. <laughs> hey, it's the new child care center. All right. Okay. Yeah. Um. So, Jen, your audit. Um. I see you're yeah. wondering about an extension RFP for the audit services. Yeah. I'm curious if you guys would like me to engage with RHR for an extension for the additional three-year term, or if you want me to post for an RFP for audit services. These, uh, the RHR and Sullivan Powers were the two main, they're, they're the two primary audit services for Vermont. Right. Uh, unless we go with a small private firm. Um, if, if they would, even respond to an RFP. Um, yeah. So Glenna did respond to our last RFP in June of 23, uh, and it was substantially less. Um, but the reliability of, um, of uh, you know, a firm that has, you know, a lot of clients, 
rather than a small vocal person. Well, right. Well, and they have a lot of staff. So if somebody gets sick or something happens, it, it, the work still gets done. Correct. So uh, Sullivan Powers, those prices are from 2023. Mm -hmm. And RHRs are current. And they're still lower than Sullivan Powers. So, okay. I figured and, we Jen, have you been happy working with them? Oh, yeah, we we're asking the same thing. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think they're dealing with a difficult situation. Um, Nemeric is limited in its capacity to only post to the prior year. So, yeah. we haven't been able to actually post any of our adjusting journal entries. Mm -hmm. um since 2021 and we're on 2025 so um i think the whole thing is just challenging in itself but um overall you know they don't quite deliver when they say they're going to but i feel like you know it's a tremendous amount of work that they're completing yeah and yeah so. and they've got us they've got us caught up right i mean right. that yeah. was our big Their thing work yeah, they're working on 2024. So yeah, I would expect by February that we have that we're on track. Awesome. So yeah. Awesome. Great. Yeah. I, think, yeah. I, I think we stay there then. I do too. I agree yeah. with that. Yes. Okay. So I will have a uh contract to present to you guys at the next meeting. Then I will just ask for your permission to to sign. Okay, perfect. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. I have a, so Jen, I just have a clarifying question. So with everything that we've reallocated and deallocated tonight, we still have $9,000 left to spend for the end of the year. Yes. Okay. Anybody got any projects that they can? Well, I, I do have no, a quick question office. because yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, the office, the office. So we need to get that quoted out first. Yeah. Right? We're going to use the same guide. Uh, probably okay. what we did over here. And that's that's um, real low impact. I mean, they're just so little. And it's obligated. You, 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 you know, have to you yeah. have to be in a contract. Um, She's gonna have like I don't remember what this name. It's not just obligation at this point though. It needs to be it needs to be in a contract. Yeah. Yeah. So that we can spend it by 2026. Right. I just have a question because you're here and I could, this could be easy. How many more 911 signs do you guys need to do? We talked about that yeah. at the last That's meeting. Do you remember? No. I said two meetings ago. I know. Two I meetings remember. ago. Uh, it's like three or four thousand dollars. Yeah. So it would be but, just something to. Okay, so I did. Wrong about the attention. I agree. We haven't done the pivot yet. Oh, because. Not really sure. Where to put them because they're going to look like cheap. They're going to look awful. For the where? Houses, the village. village. Oh, yeah. Oh. <sighs> A lot of places their houses are like boom, 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 boom. So you gotta have a sign, boom, boom, boom. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, some of them you can put out there, but some places mm -hmm. it's gonna be. What about? So that's the only other thing is we haven't done the village and we had to do Garfield. Yeah. But to do Garfield was like, I wanna say around three, three or four thousand. So you have three or four thousand signs left to do. No, no, dollars. Dollars? No. <laughs> I was confused, but you just Garfield is three or four thousand dollars, you said, right? Mm -hmm. So you really it's maybe really like eight thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. Six to eight. I forgot that we have I forgot that we haven't done the village yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know if we I don't know if maybe I should just go out the meeting with the village trustees or whatever. Well, they actually reached out about having a meeting, so with me. So maybe I'll not be one of the things I talk to them about. They need to I mean I can go to it if you let I mean, Yeah, I will. I'll let you know. Let me know. I can mm -hmm. go talk to them and see what they want. I mean it's only right we talk with them about it. Yeah, because I don't like I said, Can I they go on the business. houses? Huh? Can they go on the houses? If they also... probably can in the village. Yeah, yeah that's what I mean. People want people. them. That's to, what I mean. Right. You know, because that's the the village is one of the tougher places to find houses. Yeah. You know, because they're so close together. True. Right? And, and none, of them, are, none of them are numbered. No, they're not. Well, that's what I mean. Like, well, I mean, have, go to the hardware store and get the numbers and put them on your computer. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. yeah. I'm, the, I'm the 911 coordinator, too, so I have oh, a true. discussion all the time. Yeah. 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 yeah, just have to be four-inch sliders or, yeah. or numbers. Four-inch numbers with a reflective yeah. background. 
Yeah. And I think virtually everyone you can get it to. So, I mean, if they don't want all those signs like that, then like, let's yeah. come up with it. Let's help them come up with normal, it. Normally, we like, don't allow you to put them on your house, you know, because it's at the end of your driveway. But I mean, so in the village. You have to be up here. We ain't, as, we ain't not going to look up there, but in the village, your house is going to all right. Right. So yeah. I would, that's why I think it would work. could be a different the village. The outside of the village, I think it's a Yeah. Okay. So warrants. Oh uh, well, yeah. Susan, have you seen the warrant, Susan, online or no? No. Oh, you guys go ahead now. I trust you. Okay. <laughs> we have a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the warrants. Second. I'll second that. All oh, those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain. Abstaining. Okay. Um, okay, so we were really great and proactive about planning our budget meetings, and now we have to redo them. <laughs> so if we could please um, take a look and see what we can do. Justin, can you help me with this? Sure can. Okay. Um, so we have a meet, we had scheduled a meeting for Tuesday, December 3rd, one at five o'clock for the select board to talk about the budget, and then one at seven for the North Hyde Park meeting with Eden. The North Hyde Park meeting with Eden has now been rescheduled to Monday, December 9th. Right. Um, it looks like everyone can attend except for Savannah. Mm -hmm. um, that meeting is at 7 o'clock. The planning commission meeting is now December 3rd at 6 o'clock. I wonder if we want to change the December 3rd meeting at 5 o'clock to be Monday, December 9th prior to the Eden meeting or do something alternatively or have it, what you want to do. The planning commission's what? Meeting? The uh, the planning commission is meeting at six on December third, so you can either have a just shy of an hour meeting before them, or reschedule to a different day. Any not any day, but most any day, or have it on Monday, December 9th, prior to the Eden meeting. I uh, would like it to be prior to the Eden meeting, so we don't have two nights of meetings, but we don't know. I could I know you can't know. Could you come prior? What do you have? Oh, you have the school board, don't you? I don't like Monday nights. Because I and Jen, do you think you would that gives you a little more time to get the preliminary budget sure. ready? Hold on, I could okay. do the school board is at six. So if you met at five, I could be here for a few minutes and then run over. Would that be too much for you or would no. you be okay with that? I'm fine with that. Okay. Um, Good night. Night. Oh man. If you can do five, if that works, if you don't. Well, we were going to do five before. Right, right? exactly. So we're, we're gonna day. Susan, could you do five o'clock on the night, Monday, December 9th? And then go to Eden? And then we'll go, go to, to North Eden. Hyde Park? That's, yep. Or North that, Hyde Park. That isn't really going to work that well for me. Okay. I could skip North Hyde Park. <laughs> you could. <laughs> No, you absolutely could, Susan. No, if you do that, I can. I could do. I could do the budget at five, and as long as you got everything you need up in North Hyde Park. Yes, that that would work. You can't go, but if you, myself, and Matt can go, yeah. we're good. I went last year. Technically, so. it might make more sense from my perspective for Susan to skip the five o'clock one and go to Eden. So then you'd have four members at each meeting. Okay. That's, that's, yeah, but give, that's that's only if Matt can go. I mean, basketball will have started by then, so who knows? He had preliminarily confirmed that he can go to Eden at 7 o'clock. He did not say about 5 o'clock on the 9th. So I would rather have Susan at the budget meeting Fair. than North Hyde Park. I think she would be... That's a little more, that's bigger portion. I think I'd rather have her there for. Do you agree, Susan? 
I I think a budget meeting with us doing the budget is a priority is to North Hyde Park. Right. Is that I mean, put politically correct? <laughs> right. I mean, yes, they're it's all important, but yeah. If you could be for five, that would be cool. And then yeah. we, we would yeah. all be together, which I and, and Jen, let's that gives you a little more time to to prep the preliminary budget too. Do you feel comfortable with that? I'll make it work. <laughs> she always says that, but are you sure? <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. It's better than the third, right? Which is what it was originally. Okay. Yes. So, okay. so let's do that. 5 p.m. Okay. Monday. Ninth. Okay. And then our regular so, meeting is December 17th, which is still... I, no, it's all together. Is that... Okay. Yeah, that we had changed that one a while. Yeah. Oh, you don't want to meet Christmas Eve? Yeah, oh. no. I love you guys and all, but... And then January, did we go out that far? Yes, I think we did. Wait a minute. What, what did yep. we do? We, we have did. On on January Starting in yes, January 7th. And January 28th. And January 28th. Yes, we did. I leave all my Tuesdays free for you guys. Okay. Just can't go over to Mondays. Tuesdays. But we oh, can't do the 7th anymore, right? It was the 14th, I thought, the second and fourth Tuesdays starting in January. Wait a minute. We wouldn't be able to do the 28th. I have a seventh. I know, but the, the planning commission is changing something. So they. Oh, yeah, right. That puts a. Okay. So this, yeah, so seventh would be the planning commission. So we're going to do the 14th and the 28th. I can do the 14th. Yes. Okay, so the one that's on the seventh, we're just moving to the twenty-eighth. So. Okay. No, fourteenth. Fourteenth, the twentieth is our normal. Oh, so can I? Okay. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I can do that. February. And, no, the fourteenth is not our normal. No, the the select. Oh, okay. so okay. So we do the select board on the fourteenth and the whatever. Okay, wait a minute. The fourteenth and the twenty-eighth. Okay. Okay. And then the seventeenth of December, right? And I'm going to throw in something mm -hmm. kind of substantial. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. So we have discovered, or Kim and myself have discovered that, you know how the library trustees asked to be oh, put awesome. on a Australian ballot instead of at town meeting? Mm -hmm. And we agreed to that. Well, upon some investigation, we have discovered that it's either all or nothing when things are voted, when officials in the town are voted on. And currently we have a mismatch. So we now need to have a vote of whether or not to have all town officials elected by ballot or at oh. town meeting. Huh. So we are going to have to have a special um, meeting to do the article for all this and all and do a vote. So Kim's working on that. She was really sick, so she couldn't join tonight. Um, so we're probably going to have to throw in a mixture of some sort of special meeting in there to, to take care of this. Um, and we may have to, what else did she say in this? Um, we may have to do some fixing of the officers that were already voted on because for this past term, we may have to do like some, some special motions and some special paperwork for those for, for like you that was voted on in March. Um, but there's going to be a lot more coming on this because because we had the mismatch of some getting voted on the floor and some by ballot and we don't, it wasn't really right. <laughs> so people's terms and what we are not necessarily correct. So we have, may have to do some fixing and some like for this pack, for this term right here that we're in. Um, yeah, oh, I, 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 oh, oh, every, 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 it's everything, right. Um, 
I right, your cemetery commissioners and meeting. the whole thing, right? That yeah. would mean our, our ballot on town meeting would be yeah. pages of... Well, and this would mean town clerk and treasurer, town treasurer too, if the town wishes. Like, it's going to have to go to vote, right? Mm -hmm. It's not... I told Kim, that's not something the select board's going to decide. There's no way I'm going to make that decision of if we go ballot or not. I that's mean, a town decision. I, but it was something back... She, I'm saying something back really a long time ago that they somebody decided to select border yes. in the 90s or something. Yeah, she sent the thing to us. Yeah. So um, so David, our town attorney got back to us today. And so there will be a lot, there will be some stuff coming on yeah, that. I think he mentioned something too about a special meeting. Yeah. Maybe for just for this issue. Yeah. Well, let Basically, me it'd be like having a, a pre like a town meeting. A pre-town meeting, exactly. Exactly. I mean, I don't. Think that enough people come to town meeting for it to be like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, I feel like after invalid, it'd be better. But I mean, that's well, that's like, why the library came to us and asked right, for that, right? Because, because they wanted they that's what they said, that was their logic. We're like, okay, that makes sense. But now it's like, if you have to do everybody, it's going to be, yeah. So, well, I don't, well, uh, uh, okay. I mean, I, I think you want to talk about it, but we're not going to go back to select board being done at town meeting. I mean, again, there, you know, what the 75 people that show up at town meetings are going to do that give uh, that's not doesn't make any sense at all. Well, that's what we're going to have to decide on. That's why we're going to have to have a special meeting because you can't have some officials voted from the floor and some officials voted by ballot. It has to be one way or another. And, and I think because people were voted from the floor. Right. Doing that when somebody when they switch things to the Australian ballot, that wasn't a valid change. Correct. So everybody should have been voted from the floor all the way through. So people who were voted yeah. by Australian ballot technically weren't. Uh, Correct. So voted. is there like a list of like what positions are done both ways? Like yeah, Kim's got it up. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I don't yeah. know, like the fence viewer and all that stupid. Position? Don't they're all important. What's it do? Stop it. Public comment is meant for the beginning of the meeting. Quiet. <laughs> <laughs> so needless to say, that will be a, a, a pretty big thing that we're gonna have to talk about. Do it. Um coming up. So um oh and um we can talk about other ish, select board issues too. And yes, we did go meet with Gary and Matt agreed to fix some of it. And could I ask you to speak on this now? <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> this is on behalf of the highway, but we're not fixing it until the spring, correct? For Gary over on Marcuro? Oh, Marcuro. Yeah, sorry. That would be long. Sorry. <laughs> What did Matt decide he wanted to do? Fill it in. Okay. All of it? No. Just a portion of it. I'm not going to just... I would have let my tongue. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't understand, because I'm not, so you'd have to kind of... I mean, you fill in some of the ditch. Yes. Why you fill in the ditch is... But that's what you want, so we'll do it. So, yes. Okay. <laughs> Matt will give you his reasoning. He had great. measuring tape and all stuff. Okay. So yes. And we had a really great, we had a nice, a nice talk to him. So okay. You said um fill in ditches is was Mark's decision. Some of it, not all of it. It wasn't Matt's um, decision. That was Matt's decision. It was correct. Matt's oh, Matt. for his decision. Yes. Yep. And the select board supports his decision. I'm sorry. We don't have, we don't know about his decision yet. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. We need to get more details from Matt. Okay. I don't dare to speak on his behalf. Yep. So. Um anything else before we go into executive session? Just a quick thing. Um yep. maybe a little bit of fun. Are we <laughs> do we want to do like a holiday anything? We talked about doing like uh Summertime get together and then like winter time to get together. Yeah. So let's kind of put that out there. We have a plan of meetings so we can 
talk about it for that next one or if you want to talk more right now, but we should do a potluck. I know we should do a potluck before COVID. Oh really? That's what you did? Okay. Yeah, we did that last year when we did that in the, the break room. We can always do it down here. Okay. We used to do it down here. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, Justin, we'll talk about that a little more. That's a good idea. We should do a potluck in the evening as well. Oh, okay. 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 So I need a motion to go into executive session. What did we call it, Justin? Um it was for 313 evaluation of a public officer. Okay, that's what we need to, okay, so if I could. And that is to include all of us, Ryan, Susan, Justin. I'll make that motion, okay. And Stephen? Yes, Stephen he's as well. Part of, he's okay. part of all of us, okay. I'll yes. second that. Okay. Justin. Just me too. Jen, are you, good? oh, she hung up. <laughs> So we are going to have Nicole and Savannah continue negotiations with the union and hopefully have an update at the next meeting, I would imagine, probably. Okay. Um, do we have anything else this evening? I have nothing. We good? I make a motion to adjourn. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Super. Have a great Thanksgiving. I'll second that. Yeah. Everybody have a good Thanksgiving. Thanks have for a good Jen. Thanksgiving. It's hard to believe December's here.